OK, let's change uh, subjects now. The West Midlands has seen the biggest fall in the number of rough sleepers anywhere in the country, according to new government figures. They show a drop of 24 per cent from 319 people sleeping rough in 2018 to 218 last year. Nationally, the figure is down 9 per cent, with around 4,200 people sleeping rough. Well, charities here in the Midlands say more funding and affordable housing is needed. In a moment, we'll be speaking to the West Midlands Mayor, Andy Street, who made tackling rough sleeping one of his key pre-election pledges back in 2017. But before we talk to him, Nithya Rajan looks at some more innovative approaches that are being trialled. Homelessness is a visible problem in most parts of the UK. Local charities in Birmingham say one of the main solutions to focus on is affordable housing. My first priority would be to radically increase the supply of truly affordable housing, not just for owner occupation but affordable rented housing. I would also want to realign housing benefits with housing costs and I would want to make sure that people had access to good quality health and wellbeing support before they reach crisis. While it can seem like an overwhelming problem, there are people trying innovative solutions. Each person around this table has had to live without a roof over their head at some point in their life. And they've decided the best way forward is to put together their own podcast. So most of us get our news from an app, the TV, the radio or a paper. But they say that such news is often inaccessible to people affected by homelessness. So the idea here is they're going to create a new service that will not only make it accessible, but give information that's important and ideally help people cut the cycle of homelessness. But baby, it's not, not that easy. Hey. You don't have to chat long with 21-year-old Rhea Renee Wallace to hear about her hobbies. But she's not here for her music. She became homeless nine months ago and found herself living on £250 a month from Universal Credit. Almost half went towards paying for hostel accommodation. For her, the new service is about solving a more hidden problem. I don't like being alone. Like, I know I'm not, I'm not alone, but I feel lonely sometimes. A lot of the time, to be honest. It's something to get me out of the house instead of falling back into that cycle of where I'm having panic attacks because I'm by myself. Help comes in all shapes and sizes, much like the suits and shoes on offer at this charity. 28. Brilliant. You try those yeah, on. And then okay. come out. Here, men can get an entire wardrobe for free ahead of an interview or a new job. Bradley Megason has been homeless for the past 10 years and he remembers the first time he tried on a suit. I put it on and I felt different because obviously I've come in these clothes and then put a suit and I'm like, oh, you do look decent sometimes. <laughs> Every time I've come here, they give you the suits to try on, the ties and whatever you kind of want that they cater for. Um, it's like, it's, it's a blessing, it's a blessing, absolute blessing. So a nice plain dark tie. Here, it's not just about first impressions, but also second chances. Nithya Rajan, ITV News. Well, some of the great work being done by the various charities uh, around the country there. The West Midlands Mayor, Andy Street, joins us uh, on the programme now. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Let's just talk about those numbers. On the face of it, encouraging. A drop of 24% on last year in terms of rough sleepers in the West Midlands. But there is criticism about how those figures are measured. Do they paint a, a true picture? I think what you have to say is they're measured the same way this year as last year, so probably in terms of the progress being made, I do think it genuinely is encouraging progress. So if you look at the urban West Midlands, we're down by just over 30% compared to the same method of counting last year. So, yeah, there is some progress here, definitely. But they are just a snapshot taken on one particular day by various councils. There's lots in terms of homelessness and rough sleeping that they don't count. They don't count people in emergency shelters. They don't count people sofa surfing. They don't count people in temporary accommodation and stuck in that loop. We'll get onto that in a moment. Mm. So can we really put any trust in these figures at all? I mean, anecdotally, people come to Birmingham and say there is still a huge problem with rough sleepers. So all of that is true. They're measuring the most acute issue. They're measuring number of people sleeping out. And when I talk to people, that's the thing they are most worried about. In terms of the Birmingham numbers, they're actually down very well from 91 to 52. No one is saying that that is not still bad. 52 
Is 52 too many? But it is definite progress on the year before. And I should call out one of the real ingredients to this, where the numbers are indisputable, that since last year we've worked hard on this programme that we call Housing First, and 156 people across the seven boroughs of the West Midlands have definitely moved into a home that they would not have had last year. So that's a new innovative project, and I genuinely think it's making a difference because it's a door to close behind someone every night. Uh, and that work is, is thoroughly commendable. I mean, Shelter would, would say the same, but Shelter would also say, who we've spoken to, that it's, it's all very well getting people off the street and back into a, a home. What we've got to try and do is stop them falling into that trap in the first place. So what are we doing to try and get them before they get to that situation? And I totally agree with that. I mean, the first priority was that getting off the street, but you are absolutely right. The real issue here is the underlying causes. And you have to come back to the total number of homes being built and indeed the proportion of those that is affordable. Now, the good news in the West Midlands, we do, we've doubled the number of homes being built over the last few years and actually we've increased the amount of those that are affordable. We've also got to do more to make sure that housing benefit is sufficient to actually go into those private rented places. So there's lots more work on underlying points, but we have at least got, I think, the beginnings of a solution to the most acute issue. And just very quickly, very finally, you sat here uh, two and a half years ago, whenever yes. it was, on the day that you were elected as mayor. We were grateful for you coming in. You told us that this was your number one priority. Sitting here tonight, what's your scale of satisfaction in terms of how much you've achieved or not? Uh, my satisfaction is that we are beginning to turn what has been an incredibly difficult issue. And actually, everyone has worked together in a brilliantly collaborative ways. Charities, local authorities, government departments, and I do genuinely think we have the beginnings of a good solution. OK, Westminster's Mayor Andy Street, we appreciate you. your time once again. Thanks for coming in.